Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of the MechWarrior 3 Let's Play. As you can see, last mission we got some pretty great salvage. I don't know if maybe something changed in the way I installed the game or some setting I have. I was never getting mech salvage. I, I tried going over missions like five, six times, and I still wasn't getting them. So, as you can see, we've got a champion, which is a big deal. On top of that, we just have boatloads of new weapons, most of which we don't have enough ammo to use anyways, but it's okay. We also have some double heat sinks, some ferrofibrous armor. All in all, a very good haul, and plenty of regular standard armor. Uh, let's just replay the mission briefing so you can hear what happened. Good job, Lance Leader. We found a couple of dismantled warship class assault lasers at that construction site. Too bad we can't use them. Survivors of Damocles 2 have made contact. They're attacking the hydroelectric dam in Operations Area 2. Also, Captain Taylor has set the Eclipse down well north of us. They're trying to break through, find a place to rendezvous, and pull us out of here. Sergeant Bell here, sir. Nice job out there, by the way. We got some sweet salvage. I have an update for you. Further study of the captured files from Mission 1 have revealed more handy information. Jags have automated artillery units patrolling all the mission areas in our path of advancement. They're programmed to stay out of range of enemy units based on telemetry they're receiving from satellite scans. It would appear that Jags may know where we are at all times, so keep your guard up. The good news is we've salvaged some of the Jags' tag laser units and we can retrofit them for your mech so you can use them to call in their own artillery strikes against them. Thought you might be interested. Let us know and we'll get you set up. Sergeant Bell out. Man, any modern military installation that had that kind of problem. Whew! Well, saying someone would get executed would probably be an understatement. Operation points are set as shown. You have to tell us when it's safe to move. We'll wait for your call. Dominic Payne is going to be waiting for us so we don't have much time. We'll move through the valley on your orders and rendezvous here. We estimate that fixed emplacements cover this area. Expect much heavier mech resistance. They know we're here. All right, all right. Let's do a quick allocation of salvage. All of it, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll take this too, and this, and that. And some of these, and some of those, and all this stuff. I'll end up dumping a lot of it later on when I start running out of tonnage, but for now it's cool. Let's just go to the mech lab, strip this guy down completely. I don't know if there's any point in doing it, but I'm going to anyways. And swap to the champion. Okay, let's see. We probably want to go with Endo Steel. And we'll go with an extra light for now. For armor, we definitely do not want to be using ferro. We want to be using endo. Just, sorry, standard. Standard armor. Much more efficient tonnage-wise. This game follows the um, standard rulebook fairly strictly when it comes to building rules. And you can see that's reflected in the way things do. Okay. Let's see. I would love to use a hag. I'd, I'd, I'd love to, but I'd, I have so little, so little ammo. That's the shameful thing about this game, is that there's so many cool weapons, and you just never get to use them. Because most of the time, they you provide you with no ammo. So you're kind of stuck with using a few weapons, or energy-based stuff. That's kind of what the end game ends up going into. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? A couple ER larges would be nice for dealing with stuff at range. Blah. Cuts down to ammo. I mean, that's what really. I don't know why LRM5 ammo is separate from LRM10 and 15 and 20. It's so bad. There's not much I can do about it. 
Sorry, the text also looks bad, and most of the uh, mech lab and menus look bad, but there's nothing you can do. They were all designed for 640 by 480. They were not designed for, designed for widescreen. And uh, blown up to this resolution, 1280 by 720, they just don't look that great. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no way to patch that out. Mm. Let's see. How much is a ton? That's a decent amount of ammo. But if I remember right, those Ultra 2s aren't fairly good. And I've only got one of them. If I had two of them, maybe. Let's see. I'll probably just end up going with a couple of year large lasers. And maybe an AC-10. Honestly. And some more heat sinks. Oh, the only thing that's odd about this game is that as far as I know, XL engines don't kill you when you lose the side torso. Which is interesting. But I could be wrong. Have I ever bothered keeping a save where I've lost a side torso? I don't know. I probably haven't. Ugh. Tried and true AC-10. You'd think this would be a vastly under, under, uh, gunned mech, but eh, this is okay. Let's just stick tag in there just in case. And some double heat sink clans. Double heat sink clans. As many as we can fit in there. Artemis fire control system doesn't make any sense. Jump jets won't be needed for this mission. Can't put any of those heat sinks in there because they're incompatible. BAP, no point. Oh, AMS. I forgot all about AMS. Let's stick some AMS in there. AMS is great. You can fit up to five on any mech, which is fantastic, and all of your friendly mechs. And you collect a decent amount of it as you go, so I just keep all of my mechs stocked with as much AMS as possible. Okay, we only have five criticals, there's nothing super important we gotta change, but we should bump up the engine speed. And now look at us, we've got ammo, we've got heat sinks, we've got tag, we are golden. Wait, where's my AC-10? Uh, I put AC-10 ammo, okay. Never mind. Let's go stick the AC-10 on there. Never. Damn it. I thought I had more free tonnage than I did. I forgot that this is only five tons heavier than a bushwhacker. I was thinking it was much heavier. Okay, so we have the four tons of ammo, the two ER larges. Definitely keep the AMS. Matter of fact, I'll stick that in the center torso just for consistency. As far as I know, AMS clan and AMS are basically identical. It's possible that the um, clan version is slightly more efficient. Uh, like a little faster at, at shooting down missiles. But it's hard to tell. Hmm. Well, this isn't super favorable. I'm kind of running a little slow, but we'll see how it goes. And before we continue, I'm going to back up my save. So you guys will just see a frozen screen for a minute or so while I go ahead. Actually, you know what? I won't do that to you. I'll splice them together. See you in a little bit. And we are back. So let's go ahead and launch. Of course, it's got a black screen Reactor for me. Online. Sensors online. And Weapons we're back. online. Coolant reserve online. Self-destruct systems online. All systems nominal. Mech power up detected. Oh boy. I have good position. Enemy unaware. Those Enemy unaware. Things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Your patronage is greatly Waiting for rendezvous coordinates. 
Roger that, Lance Leader. Transferring now. Here are the first few. Oh, I remember this mission gets pretty tricky. Let's just go ahead and do a repair. This thing doesn't have much of a cockpit, does it? I remember about this mission is there are a couple light mechs that spawn over to my left by a wall. They like they literally come out of a crack in the wall. And they surprised the hell out of me the first time around. And I think I can safely deal with them without activating the guys defending out of able. So let's go ahead and try that, and if that doesn't work, you won't see it because I'll start a new recording. careful with that tag. I, I wish that MechWarrior 3 had a fire weapon group number button, but it, it doesn't. There's no fire weapon group 1, fire weapon group 2. There's swap between weapon groups, and there's fire selected weapon group. So you can't fire more than one group at a time, which is just so annoying that there's nothing I can do about it. I suppose maybe I could make an auto hockey script that made it so when I hit the button for fire weapon group 2, it swapped to 2 and then fired it without having me to do the uh, middleman stuff. That's doable. Not necessarily fun, but doable. That turret over there is mostly hidden. He defends actually the entrance to the next mission. Oh, that's just... Dag. You can actually see it on the radar as it's coming in. Go! Goodbye. Please come again. And another one. It's the dust. Just before I start getting some mech company. Did I say I didn't like tagging one of the other episodes? Targeting. I lied. I like it very much. It's not that great against mechs though. Just trying to...
once you take down one of these objectives, I forget if it's Op Abel or Op Charlie, you get the fun time of a couple mechs appearing from basically nowhere. They're both named clan mechs, and they're like leaders of some important clan thing. And they are not to be fucked with. They hurt. They're not as annoying as the champion, though. I think their weapons just aren't very suited towards good. Certainly better than a vanilla. Of course, they didn't exist in vanilla. But you, you guys get the idea. I'm slightly out of range for those turrets, but those turrets are miles out of range for me, so I'm just going to kind of ignore them for now. Was bringing the MFBs here a bad idea? I don't remember. This get, this mission gets a little dicey. It's never been one that I've struggled with, but it is one that if you don't know what's going on, you can easily get overwhelmed because you forget that those mechs appear in a certain fashion. But there's like one that appears way off there, and another that appears like off in this area. So I think based on my positioning, if I just rush this guy, I think that's what I did before. I should be fine. Should be. Maybe. Possible. Also, doesn't everybody love this fact that dead uh, APCs still make sound? I know I do. I think Bulldogs do it too. We have arrived and are ready to deploy. There was one time where I started repairing and all of a sudden enemies popped up. Because I think I did it right after. I did it like I did my repair right after I destroyed the objective, so naturally the MFBs were getting shot at with me inside. Which was great. Let's see. What do we have for objectives? Uh, Baker. Baker, Baker, Baker. There's a mech around here somewhere. It's not one of the ones that pops up, it's just one of the ones that Oh, turret. That's a turret right there. I don't know why it's not active, but it is a turret. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, oh come on. It's not doing a lot of damage, but it is annoying. And for some reason my ear larges are out of range. Did I knock down two of them at once? I might have. Why can't I shoot you? Are you behind? Oh, did I just take out the... Oh. Did that artillery really destroy it? I think that artillery really might have just destroyed the, uh... Might have destroyed the bulldog that was running after me. Which is pretty funny. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot that you can still fire it if it's not fully charged. It just doesn't do anything. It's a little weird. It's kind of a lot of power to give the player, but it is very convenient, so I guess I'm not complaining too hard. Please and thank you. Primary objective complete. I guess it must be not Charlie that I need to destroy to get those guys to pop up. Well, they could be wrong. They could already be here. There we go. Ow, ow, ow.
targeting. Okay. There's Commander Freya. See how good this Surat truly is. And must protect me. So it's when you destroy Commander Freya that Planner Delta appears. I see how it is. Did that really just take off its arm? I didn't mean to do that. Why is it not coming after me? It should be. See that weird flickering shit that happens? Yeah, I don't know why. It might be Z fighting. Targeting. Oh crap! Shadow can ain't worth a lot when it can't move. going to pass on that. Not bad, not bad, eh? Breaking off. Waiting for rendezvous coordinates. You know what? You guys can start heading towards the I'll deal now. with these guys. I'm curious if my damage state carries over to the next game. I wouldn't be shocked if it did, given all the stuff they've modeled so far. But I could be wrong. Like, in other words, I've lost some armor on my left torso. I'm curious if, once I launch again with this mech, they take that into account. Not when I launch again, I guess just at the end of the mission if they tallied up. Next episode is going to be an interesting one. We get to meet Dominic Payne. Well, just got to wait for these MFBs, and then this will be over. For now. Slow folks. How are you guys doing on damage? Oh, they're good. There's a third one. Oh, he's just further up. The concept of a mobile field base is kind of nice for this game because it basically allows you to be the sort of one man army. But without the unrealism of being able to take on an entire army all on your own. Because, I mean, you're constantly getting repaired. But at the same time, you think that they'd have some field mech bays set up. Not mobile field bases, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't be useful for them. This is a fixed emplacement. But you'd think the Smoke Jaguars would have mech bays. And as a mech got damaged fighting me, they would back off and uh, go into their little mech bay and trade out with someone else who's a little fresher. That would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? But that would be pre that was pretty advanced thinking. Even Talk now, that's... The enemy's advancing on your position. Must I do everything personally? All units regroup. Protect the project. We've arrived and are ready to deploy. <laughs> we'll hold Osis's precious state site. Too late now. Okay.
Well, with that, I think we are at the end of the episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and I will see you next time.